So today we are going to talk about the newest character in Nikkei, and that is of course Red Hood. There has been a big discussion surrounding Red Hood, so I wanted to share my thoughts about her, talk about her place in the meta, where I think she will shine the most, and just give my honest opinions about Red Hood. First up, let's talk about her kit, what she does, where she excels, and how you can maximize her utility. Her skill 1 is essentially going to be a permanent charging speed buff that can stack up to 10 times, giving her a total of 38.1% more charging speed at level 10. You can start the fight by spamming her attacks to get all 10 stacks very quickly, and the good thing about her regular attacks is that they can actually deal a fair bit of damage even without spamming. So once you get all 10 stacks in her skill 1, you can go ahead and switch to a different character in your team if that is your preference. Additionally, her skill 1 is also going to convert any charging speed over 100% into charge damage, giving her 2.4 times the excess charging speed as additional charge damage. So if Red Hood is getting additional charging speed from characters like Maxwell or Alice, then that is going to help increase her charge damage whenever she is using her burst. For the second skill, this will basically give Red Hood a permanent burst effect on her attacks, and this is also going to grant different 10 second buffs depending on when she uses her burst. Using her burst during phase 1 is going to increase your whole team's defense by 50.68%. Using her burst during phase 2 will give Red Hood a healing effect on her attacks, recovering 23.04% of attack damage as HP, and using her burst during the third phase is going to increase her attack by 71.42% of her own attack. And because Red Hood can reset her cooldowns when she uses her burst during phase 1 or phase 2, that means that you can have more than one of these buffs active at the same time. But do keep in mind that she can only reset her cooldowns twice per battle. She can reset the cooldown once after using her burst during phase 1, and she can reset her cooldowns again when using her burst during phase 2. As for her burst ability, this is going to activate different effects depending on when you use her burst. Using her burst during phase 1 is going to increase all of your allies attack by 77.55% for 10 seconds. Using her burst during phase 2 is going to attract all of your enemies towards Red Hood while also increasing her HP potency by 74.88% for 10 seconds. And then lastly, using her burst during the third phase is going to change her weapon, making her deal 27.8% of her final attack as damage, on top of giving her attacks double the effective radius, and also increasing her charging speed by 100.8% with all of these effects lasting for 10 seconds. And the attack buff from this ability is arguably one of if not the best buff in the game. A staggering 77.55% increase in attack is simply incredible, and the fact that it applies to your entire team makes it even better. Although, using her burst during phase 2 is not really that good. The lifesteal doesn't prove necessary when running a well-balanced team like Bunnies or Naga and Tia, but it might have situational value if you're opting for a full-on damage-focused team, one without a healer or tank. There can be some cases where you need to draw enemy attention away from your squishier units, so having Red Hood as a pocket tank can be useful if timed correctly. But generally speaking, you won't be using Red Hood for her burst phase 2 utility. There are simply other burst 2 units that deliver greater impact in terms of overall value. Now let's talk about her playstyle, my thoughts about her kit, and where I think Red Hood will shine the most. A lot of people are not too pleased about her damage output, and they will often compare Red Hood to Alice. While it's true that these two characters have a lot of similarities, it doesn't necessarily imply that they are always going to fill the same role. If you take a look at Red Hood purely as a DPS character, then yes, she is not going to be that good compared to the other top tier DPS units that we have. But if you take a look at Red Hood as a support that has some level of damage capability, then you can start to see how they actually intended this character to be. A common misconception is that a character's class is going to tell you what their role is. But actually, a character being labeled as an attacker doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to be a DPS. And the same principle applies to the other character classes. We have attacker units that play the role of a support, and we also have defender and support units that are actually main damage dealers. So to say that Red Hood should be played and be expected to perform like a typical DPS just because she is an attacker is not going to be in line with how her kit is designed. I believe that her overall design caters more towards being in a supportive role. She has one of the best attack buffs in the game, she provides a decent amount of protection, and she has piercing attacks which is less commonly found in other characters. We have a couple of bosses that can be easily countered when you have a character that can pierce, so having Red Hood in those situations is going to be very useful. One more thing that I don't see many people talk about is her ability to efficiently take down enemy parts. This will have the most impact during raids because a good amount of your damage can actually come from breaking the boss part. 
parts. Her burst doesn't deal a crazy amount of damage, but this can still hit multiple boss parts because of the increased radius. And during my testing, I found that her damage towards enemy parts is actually not too different compared to Alice when she is using her burst. So especially when it comes to bosses where the breakable parts are very close together, for example Altaisen, Red Hood is going to do a better job at breaking boss parts compared to Alice. The ability to get rid of boss parts efficiently is kind of underrated in my opinion. If you can get rid of boss parts quickly, not only does it contribute to more damage, but it also lets you ignore potentially deadly attacks from the enemy. For me, I see Red Hood as a versatile support that can buff your team's damage, provide decent protection, and also contribute a good amount of damage by taking down boss parts more efficiently compared to the average Nikkei. While she may not be the best, she still outperforms many other units that we got in the past. But even so, a lot of people actually want Red Hood to get buffed, and I will also be happy if she got one. But the thing is, it's not like she is going to be in a very bad state if she doesn't get a buff. I feel like the majority of players who are asking for a buff most likely are the ones who are heavily invested emotionally and even financially towards Red Hood. Because when you take a step back and actually think about it, we have a handful of other characters that deserve a buff more than Red Hood. Some people say that Red Hood needs a buff because she is a pilgrim and pilgrims should be really strong. Well, tell that to Nia Lister and Isabel. For Nihilister especially, she was also one of the most anticipated characters in the game but she never got a buff. Not to mention that she is the most difficult character to get because first, you need to get Sin, Quincy or Guilty, after that you need to clear chapter 20 stage 31, and then you have to wait for multiple weeks or even months to complete the liberation for Nihilister herself. Some people are also asking for a buff because Blue Ocean Neon got buffed when a lot of players complained about how bad she was. But if you ask me, if a character needs to be that bad to actually get a buff, then Red Hood has no chance of getting one. Blue Ocean Neon got buffed because she was literally unusable outside of one very specific type of enemy. And even after the buff, she is still considered to be a bottom tier character, not unless we are talking about idle animations. So ultimately, I don't think Red Hood needs a buff, but a lot of people want to give her a buff, and some people intentionally downplay Red Hood in the hopes of giving her a buff. But maybe I'm the crazy one for thinking that Red Hood is good enough as she is. Next up, let's actually talk about how I'm using Red Hood and basically just my personal go-to when I'm using her in my teams. I have tried multiple different teams but I found the most success when I'm using Red Hood mainly as a support and sort of a sub DPS. When you first take a look at this team, it might seem like Red Hood is one of the main damage dealers which she kind of is but not really. The majority of the team's damage is still going to come from Modernia but Red Hood can also deal a decent amount of damage because of the different damage bonuses from Naga and Tia. I also went for Dorothy because Red Hood's buff is going to be beneficial to our damage oriented skills. And generally speaking, you will get more value out of Red Hood's attack buff if you have 3 damage dealers in your team. I don't recommend going past 3 damage dealers because at that point, you're going to miss out on very powerful damage buffs from supports like Naga and Tia for Blank and Noir. Another reason why I went for Dorothy is because she can boost your team's damage to the enemy parts. So that is going to let Red Hood take down more enemy parts during her burst. As for how I'm building Red Hood, I'm focusing more on getting attack rolls because that is going to be overall the best. And when it comes to charging speed versus charge damage, it doesn't really matter which one I get because the highest roll you can possibly get on charging speed is 6.09% and the highest charge damage you can get is 14.63%. So it's roughly the same as the charging speed conversion on Red Red Hood's kit. Aside from that, the other stats I'm gonna be happy with is Elemental Damage Bonus, which is especially going to be useful for the upcoming solo raid boss. I also wouldn't mind getting a little bit more ammo increase, so that I can get her skill 1 to maximum stacks just by emptying a single magazine. I'm going for Resilience because mine has the bonus damage a strong element, so that is going to be my best option for now. Also, I don't think it's worth upgrading Onslaught or Adjutant Cube because not many characters use that. You can pretty much cover every single character in the game just by using the Bastion Cube or Resilience. So overall, I think that Red Hood is already a good character as she is. And if she does get a buff, then that's great, but if she doesn't, I think that she will still be fine. Let me know your thoughts about this character in the comments below, and as always, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.